Today I put together a compilation of 50 DIY projects. You'll see a lot of home decor as well as some furniture mixed in there. If we haven't met yet, my name is Tiffany. I'm a Washington real estate agent. Over the summer when I decided to start my channel here on YouTube, I thought it would be a fun little creative outlet. I had hoped that maybe I could help some people see that you really don't have to spend a ton of money in order to create a beautiful home. And I've been blown away by your support and encouragement. Thank you so much for joining me here. Now let's get to it. If this is your first time here with me, welcome. I do a lot of my shopping here at the Goodwill outlet or the Goodwill bins. Here items are priced per pound. Every store is set up a little bit different. They may have a different way of doing things and they may have different pricing. Just for reference, at our store, they charge $1.29 per pound for housewares. What drew me to this particular tray was the size and shape and I loved those gold handles. Typically when doing a project like this, I would remove these handles, but because of the way this tray was made, I would have to deconstruct it quite a bit in order to do that. So I just decided to tape them off. really liked this threshold bowl, but it was somewhat damaged. And this piece from Crate and Barrel, I'm assuming that it originally had a cloche or a domed lid on it, but it was nowhere to be found in the bins, so I decided to repurpose it. This day at the Goodwill outlet, all of their furniture was half off. After doing some research on bleaching cedar, I decided to try this wood bleach. The way this product works is you apply part A and let that soak into the wood for five to 10 minutes. You then apply part B, and you can repeat that as many times as you would like until you get the desired result. And this is what it looked like after repeating three times and letting it sit overnight. And last, I applied this white finishing wax. And this vase here, I almost overlooked this. It sat in the bins for quite a while before I decided to pick it up. It was very nice, but it just felt a little busy to me and that caning was somewhat damaged.
Once that was removed, this quickly became one of my new favorite pieces. I think it looks like something you would find in a really nice high-end store and you would pay a lot for it. It was a heavier piece, but at our Goodwill outlet, if something weighs over three pounds, they'll charge you a flat fee for it. So I ended up paying $3.39 for this. I decided to remove the chain from this and just reattach it to one of those. This then could be used as a hanging flower basket. I also took the base from that vase and attached it to one of the baskets. I thought this large woven bowl was beautiful. It did have some damage on it. Initially, I tried to repair it, but I ended up just removing the damaged section. found this blanket at our regular Goodwill in town. I knew it would go great in my family room, but it did have some snags on it. We do not know how to play backgammon, but I loved the color and texture on this case. So I brought this home and cleaned it up. I've been using this to style like I would a book. This vase is something I picked up several years ago at the Goodwill outlet and it's been sitting unused. This fall, I decided I wanted to bring in some of those terracotta colors. Once painted, I wanted it a little bit lighter. So I mixed in some white. Once dry, I dabbed on some very watered down white paint and just let that drip down. You may be wondering why I painted the whole vase if I was just going to tape it off and spray paint a portion of it. The reason is I don't always fully know what I'm going to do when I start a project. Often they evolve as I go and this was one of those. When you are using flat or matte paints, this is your friendly reminder to be sure to shake that can really well. Otherwise, your paint may end up looking like this. Thankfully, I was able to slough most of it off and salvage it. this cutting board in the bins. It had obviously seen a lot of use. Mm -hmm. 
I've had a lot of interest in this product, so I'll have this along with any other products shown in this video linked down in the description box. I was really excited when I spotted these. I love that caning and they were in great condition. Once we got those stools painted white, I wasn't loving the black on those rings. To remove the gold from these, I sprayed them with this oven cleaner. After sitting for a while, that gold just came right off. Also picked up these faux florals this day. Thanks to you guys, I learned this little trick for fixing misshapen baskets. I found this to work best with softer weave baskets. I've tried it with some that are more solid and I didn't have very good luck with those. If you take that basket and submerge it in water until you feel it softening up and then take it out and set it out to dry. Ideally, you would be putting it on something that is the shape that you want your basket to be. And if possible, you'll want to set it out in the sun or put it in front of a fan to help make sure that you get it really good and dry. While on a little family trip, we stopped at a small independently owned thrift store and I found this wooden candle holder slash bowl here. And this day, yellow tags were 75% off. So I ended up getting this for $1.25. When I got it home, I flipped it over and noticed that it was originally from Pottery Barn. It was in kind of rough shape. So I decided to remove that finish. I had had some people recommend that I try using oven cleaner. I generally like to start with the less aggressive options. So here I'm using fume free oven cleaner. I sprayed that on and saturated it and let it sit for 30 minutes. It really hadn't done much and I was starting to lose daylight. So I decided to step it up and use this heavy duty oven cleaner. I again let that sit for about 30 minutes and that did seem to be working better. 
I repeated that process one more time. I then used a wire brush on it. I like to do this sometimes when I'm taking the finish off of wood pieces. I love how it deepens that wood grain and I just feel like it adds a little extra character to the piece. And this is a little reminder to think outside of the box. To achieve the look that I was going for, I applied a white wax. I'm a fan of anything that will help to keep papers off of our counters and help to keep us organized. So this has been a great addition to our home. This was originally part of a tiered plant stand, but it was broken. Here I'm testing stain markers on the bottom to find the best match. I believe this to be a hamper lid, but that hamper was nowhere to be found. Here I'm using a technique that I've seen some furniture refinishers use. First, I started with this white wax. I then took some grayish paint. This is actually our wall color, which is Revere Pewter, and I watered that down once brushed on, I wiped off the excess. When I picked this up, I thought this would be great for staging a kid's room. I started by filling those holes. As much as possible, I wanted to try to eliminate those yellow undertones. So first I started by using this special walnut stain. I then created a wash by mixing these paints with water and then wiping it off before it had a chance to dry. What drew me to this was that frame. I took a trip to Home Depot and picked up this large chalkboard sheet. I 
I like to use E6000 in combination with hot glue. That takes quite a while to dry, whereas that hot glue dries nice and quick to hold it in place. In hindsight, I really should have primed this piece, but thankfully I haven't had any issues with bleed through. It still amazes me what a difference a coat of paint can make. I found these canister lids, but I couldn't find the matching canisters. I also picked this up that day. Here I'm using some wire and I'm checking to see how much I would need to get around these. I then fed that wire through the wooden beads, bending the end so that when I cut this, they wouldn't fall off. I love the design on these, but they felt a little heavy to me visually. Some days and some projects, I end up doing a lot of spray painting and my wrist and my hands can start to really hurt. But this little handle right here has made all the difference. So if that's something that you struggle with, definitely go check this out. not really sure what this was from. It looks like it was probably originally attached to something. Here I'm using some leftover wood beads. Ideally, this would be sewn, but I do not sew, so I just hot glued this. If you've ever shopped for antique cutting boards, you know that they can come with a pretty hefty price tag. So I decided to see if I could recreate the look on a budget.
if you were going to use these in your kitchen as food prep surfaces, you would definitely want to use a product that is intended for that. But because I am strictly going to be using these for decorative purposes, I opted to use stain. Originally, I thought these were dirty, but I think someone had applied some type of product to these to achieve this look because it definitely was not coming off. My thought with doing two different colors on these was if I'm staging or decorating a space, if I'm looking for a light piece or a dark piece in that size and shape, I have options. This sign was really cute as is, but I just don't have a use for it like this. My original plan was to paint that gray on, apply this lettering, seal those edges, and spray over it. But when I took it out to spray it, I realized that I didn't have any more of the spray paint that I was wanting to use, so I just went with it and worked with what I had on hand. picked up these stools for $7.99 each. When I found this, I really hoped I could find that other piece. It's rare that it works out, but sometimes you find those little miscellaneous pieces in there. And once again, E6000 to the rescue. This is one of the more expensive pieces I've picked up at the Goodwill outlet. I paid $9.99 for it. I was really drawn to that solid oak frame. 
I started by removing that mirror. When I'm refinishing mirrors, I prefer to remove that just because it's really easy to accidentally scratch that glass when you're sanding. Unfortunately, I had to learn that the hard way. If you're not able to remove the mirror part, you can always just tape it off to protect it. Here I'm doing a little test. I have used citrus strip to remove finish off of wood several times. I've also used oven cleaner and both of them do work, but I wanted to see which works better. I wrapped it up in this plastic to help keep that product from drying onto the frame and I let it sit for three hours. I was pretty surprised by the results. The section where I had applied the citrus strip had effectively removed that finish, whereas the spots where I had used the oven cleaner really had not done much. So I decided to remove that oven cleaner and apply citrus strip. And with this piece, I wanted to share a process called ceruzing. This tends to work best on oak. For this process, you'll need some wire brushes. Here I'm going along with the grain of the wood to help deepen that wood grain. Next, you'll take some watered down paint and apply it to the piece. And you'll want to make sure that you get that paint down into that wood grain. And unfortunately, I don't have this footage for you, but before that paint has a chance to dry, you'll want to take a rag and wipe it off of the surface. You'll then want to finish it off with some type of protectant. If you're okay with bringing out some of those orange oak tones, you could use any top coat because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't taking it back to that original color. I opted to finish it with a white wax. I think this is such a simple way to take those 80s or 90s oak pieces and give them an update. Here I'm mixing this chalk paint with water to create a wash. I liked the size and shape of this, but I wanted to make it something that could be used year round.
one of my favorite places to find rustic wood is down at a local fencing company where they always have a free wood pile. Here I'm applying an iron acetate that we've made with some steel wool and vinegar, and this will act as a stain. I seem to be really drawn to wooden bowls and I loved the grain on this one. I imagine you've noticed that I use a lot of the same products. When possible, I prefer to work with what I have on hand. These little sanding discs in this attachment are intended for sanding bowls. These did work, but as you can see, they were a little difficult to control on the drill. Once sanded down, I once again took some wire brushes to it to deepen that wood grain and add some character. I wanted to try to remove that Sharpie off of the top. Once cleaned up, I decided this needed a little something more, so I used some of that leftover chalkboard and some scrap wood.
It's rare to find items like this in the bins where the glass is still intact. There was, however, one thing that did need to be fixed on these. If you ever have a frame that is separating and you don't want to completely take it apart to repair it, you can just use wood filler. You may have noticed by now that I'm a pretty big fan of this Rust-Oleum chalked charcoal paint. I've used a lot of different charcoals and grays, but there's something about this one that I'm really drawn to. It's kind of a warm, creamy charcoal color. This was such a nice quality piece, but it was feeling a little bit dated. So I wanted to see if I could breathe some new life into this and give it an update. Once that finish was removed off of the top, it might be a little hard to tell from this, but there were some pretty strong orange undertones and that was really not the look I was going for, but it gave me an opportunity to try a new technique. Once we had primed the whole piece and painted that base, I then used this rugged tan Once fully dry, I applied this decorative glaze, and this is one of those products that a little goes a long way. Before that glaze had a chance to dry, I took this deck staining brush and ran it over it to help mimic the look of wood grain. After letting that dry for a few days, I came back with this natural twine. And here I'm just dry brushing a tiny bit of that product over the top. It turned out a little blotchy. So once that was dry, I ended up going back over that top with a little bit of that decorative glaze to try to even it out. And last, once everything on that top was dry, I sealed it with a polycrylic.
I really liked this rug, but it did have a couple of snags on it. So here I decided to try filling it in with a Sharpie. Ultimately, I ended up layering it with this welcome mat. And these next two projects were a little controversial. I loved this plant stand. I thought those legs were beautiful. And I loved that this was a solid oak piece. It was, however, quite warped and damaged. Once disassembled, I tried to repair this top piece with some wood glue and clamps, but unfortunately when I went to clamp this piece, it ended up cracking in other spots. I realized it was going to be beyond my ability to restore this. I had to decide if I was going to scrap this or do something with it. My original thought was to do the serrucing method on this, but because of the amount of damage, I opted to paint it. And I did forget one step here, and that was to seal this piece. So I ended up with some tannins or that yellow color bleeding through the paint. In order to seal oak pieces, you'll want to use shellac. Ultimately, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's a really fun, unique piece, and it now has a home in my office. I had also picked up these candlestick holders that day. These were cute as is, however, they just weren't quite my style, so I decided to paint them. When I found this in the bins, I wasn't really sure what it was. If you guys happen to know, I'd love to hear, but I knew I could do something with it.
we've had this couch for a long time and these are down filled cushions and this is what they look like the majority of the time. So I picked up this pillow at Walmart for under $5 and I'm gonna see if I can prolong the life of this couch. When I got this home, I flipped it over and found that it was originally from Anthropology. Definitely needed a good cleaning. So first I mixed up some vinegar and water and washed it with that. Once that had fully dried, I ended up going over it again with a mixture of water and bleach. At that point, I felt confident that it was good and clean, but I wanted to freshen up the look. So I mixed up some paints that I had on hand. I frequently find these at the Goodwill outlet and you can really easily detach this piece and attach it to some old fence boards or pallet boards. Here I'm using my Bissell Little Green to clean these. This is my go-to for cleaning upholstery or if you have little ones or pets, this is a great thing to have on hand. As you can see, there was a little bit of pilling on this fabric. So here I took this shaver and went over it with that. Just a reminder, I'll have all products shown in this video linked down in that description box for you. It's been really fun looking back on my journey thus far here. If you enjoyed this video, would you please do me a big favor and hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Thank you so much for being a part of my journey here. I'll see you next time.